ought to know about your first paranormal experience. I got one. So when we were younger, we used to go to Mexico a lot, specifically Zacatecas. And in Zacatecas, there's um, a mine there in the city, and they used to allow tours to go through. Um, when I was younger, I remember going onto the tour, and you had to ride a like a mine cart to go in. As soon as we were going in, I heard the loudest scream of my life. Like, did not sound human. Did not sound like an animal. It was so creepy. Everyone heard it too, but I kind of just casually brushed it off. Later on during the tour, um, the man said specifically as we were walking through the mine that a lot of people died making these mines. And the moment that he said that, I turned around and I saw a giant shadow figure run around the corner from the way that we had came in. It was terrifying. Okay, so if you follow me, you know, a couple months ago, we found out my apartment in New York was illegal and I was displaced and staying in Airbnbs trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. Yeah, one of those Airbnbs we stayed in, we were not alone. It started with our cats acting very strange. Like, they were peeing everywhere, um, meowing a lot. When they're not really vocal cats, they don't meow at us at all, really. And, like, pawing at closed doors, like, trying to get in the room, which they do if there's somebody in the room. But there would be nobody in the room. One night, I randomly woke up at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning because I heard a child playing outside. And I remember thinking, who is letting their child play outside in the streets of Brooklyn at 1 o'clock in the morning? Looked outside, saw nothing, but it sounded like he was very close. I forget about it. Then a couple of days later, my roommate asked me, like, have you heard anything, like weird I'm like what do you mean she said she had heard a kid laughing and like somebody singing a lullaby like a man singing a lullaby but looked outside the windows and couldn't see nothing i'm like that's weird um okay and then there was the knocking and i can't fit it all in this part i'm sorry part two coming soon okay so where we've left off me and my roommates are staying in this airbnb after being displaced from our legal apartment our cats are acting crazy i'm hearing random stuff at night my roommates hearing random stuff at times and over the course of the two weeks we're here we keep hearing these random knocking sounds now this airbnb was like a duplex apartment the hosts were on the lower level we were on the upper level and it neighbored an apartment building on one side. So one day the host asked if we can vacate the apartment for a couple of hours so we can have a contractor come do some work on the bathroom. We're like, fine, we leave. One of my roommates comes back a little bit early. So when we get back, we ask like, oh yeah, did they ever come work on the bathroom? He's like, oh yeah, like I heard a bunch of like banging and knocking around in there. Like it sounded like somebody was doing work. So we text the host to, you know, double check. And he's like, oh yeah, actually I rescheduled the contractor. Nobody came. I'm sorry, huh? And then we're just like, you know what, the knocking is probably the neighbor. Thin walls, you can hear your neighbors, whatever, it's fine. And since we always heard it from the same side of the apartment, it was like, logical excuse. And so one day we're leaving the apartment and I realized, while the duplex neighbored an apartment complex on one side, the side where we were hearing the knocking from neighbored an empty parking lot. Okay, this is probably one of the scariest things I've ever felt. When I was a kid, I was chasing my younger brother in the hallways of our house. And my bedroom door was open. And from the corner of my eye, I swear to God, I saw a woman with long black hair walking in my closet. So I stopped and I looked at it and I ran in my room. There was nothing there. I didn't say anything, but I was f terrified. I was like, what the fuck? That was creepy. Fast forward later on that week. My sister and I share a room and she was sleeping. My mom got me one of those like little flashlights for reading. So I was reading a book and I swear to God, my sister woke up in sleep like this. Okay, she was sleeping and woke up directly straight up like this and looked at the corner. She looked at the wall and said, tell her to stop. And I'm like, tell who to stop? And she's like, tell the woman to stop staring at me. And I'm like, what woman? And she's like, the woman over there with the long black hair. <laughs> what the fuck? Mm-mm. So growing up, me and my brother had a nanny and we were super close with her. She loved us, especially my brother she loved my brother a lot and one day she told us that she was going to go on vacation to vietnam for a few months so it's been a month since she left and we were just sleeping this is back when me my brother and my parents slept together because we were all really small and my brother could not talk yet suddenly he woke up in the middle of the night and started crying and shivering and pointing and looking at something kind of like walking around the room obviously me and my mom and my dad couldn't see what it was he was just sitting there like literally like his eyes locked on something and crying so this is really scary and we just like put him back to sleep and then the next morning we woke up to a voicemail on her phone basically it was my nanny's husband letting us know that she passed away that night that my brother saw all that crazy stuff in the room and we believe that it was just her saying bye to my brother Okay, I've been dying to share this story. When I was like maybe five years old, my mom took me and my brother to the Orange County Fair, like we did every year. 
I went on my favorite ride, which was the swings. You know, you sit in a little bucket seat and it swings you in a circle like this. All time favorite ride, went on it every year. I would go on it multiple times a year. This one particular time though, ended up being the last time I ever went on that ride. And I'm gonna tell you why. <clears throat> Sitting in front of me was a little boy about the same age as me. He turned around and looked at me and said, we're all gonna die on this ride. Instantly I was like, shut up, stop saying that, don't talk like that, That's, you're scaring me. And he just kept repeating himself while laughing. At this point, the ride had already started moving, but for some really weird reason, I could hear him speaking to me, even though he was in the seat in front of me. I could hear him speaking almost like he was inside my brain. I have to do a part two, it's too long. Okay, so I don't know if this is considered paranormal, but this happened today. Um, I think our phones be listening to us. Siri, I don't know, somebody's listening. So I was on my way to the gym with my roommate and I got into my car and I got a notification saying that it was en route to Planet Fitness. And I was like, what the heck? Because mind you, I never, ever, ever, I have never used my GPS to get to the gym because I know where the gym is and it's pretty close to my house. So why would I need the GPS? So... I got a notifi notification telling me that it was en route to Planet Fitness. First of all, how did they know I was going to the gym? How did the GPS know that I was going to the gym? And I never used the GPS to get to the gym. So why was the address like, ugh, I don't know. I got freaked out and I showed it to my roommate. And as soon as I show it to her, the notification disappears. Shadow people are real. When I was eight years old, I woke up in the middle of the night to see a man standing completely still in my window. I only saw his shadow, but he had a trench coat and a top hat on. It's normal to see people's shadows, especially if they were like walking their dogs or something, because that's just the kind of window I had, but this was legit. At first I thought, okay, maybe it's just like sleep paralysis, but after a while, he kept coming back almost every single night. I remember getting so scared to sleep by myself that I would either just sleep on the couch or with my mom. <laughs> Eventually, we moved out of that place and I never saw him ever again. Fast forward to age 23, just when I completely forgot this guy even existed. I was battling depression for my divorce and I attempted to throw myself off of a building. As I was about to jump off, I get a phone call from my mom. My mom has a friend who's a psychic medium whom I've never met before. I frantically called her asking if I'd ever seen a man with a top hat. You won't believe what he said next. Like for part two. Okay, so this happened back in 2009. This event happened two weeks after my grandmother passed away. It was one of the saddest moments of my life because my grandma was one of my best friends. When this occurred, I was in my basement uh, studying for some sort of exam or whatnot. I don't know why, but I just had a moment and I looked up into the sky and I was like, Grandma, if you're here right now, like if everything's okay, if you're in a good place, if you're in a, if you're safe, please let me know. Give me some sort of sign. I sat there in silence for about 20 seconds. And next thing you know, I had one of those chandeliers where you had to like, click it on for it to turn on so while i'm sitting there just hoping to get a sign that light that lamp flickered on and off and the reason why i know it wasn't a power out is because i saw the flicker like move i actually saw it move it turned on and then it turned off in my head i think it was my grandma contacting me telling me that everything's all right this one you're gonna like because it takes place in new orleans one of my summer jobs was to work in an old university theater for a summer stock just saying that every theater has a ghost and this one definitely did first week into working at the costume shop they sent me to the front foyer to cut out patterns for a show named camelot 15 minutes into cutting the patterns in the front foyer i keep on getting the sense of being watched out of nowhere the room goes from cold to really 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 cold as i'm cutting into the patterns in my corner of my eye i keep on seeing a figure of a man standing at the foot of the staircase and he's dressed up in all black and he has black hair and a black mustache every time i look up he's not there I'm getting the sense that I'm being watched. So we break for lunch and I go into the costume shop to eat with my crew. Flat out asked the crew, hey, do we have a theater ghost? One of the women without hesitation says, yeah, his name is Bob. Gave it a name. I asked her who's Bob. And apparently Bob was an old lighting designer. He passed away several years ago. Loved the theater and his job so much that he pretty much watches over it. He likes to make his presence known to new workers. So I asked her, what did Bob look like? He's seen he's wearing all black, the black hair and a black mustache. Barely finished my work day. So I was sleeping over a friend's house and she had always said that she had this ghost named Fred in her basement and we were sleeping in her basement and I woke up you know when you sleep on your ear funny I woke up from my ear hurting and I roll over and I see this man old man staring at me he was like bald on top and wearing a denim button down shirt and overalls and just looked so mad at me and so angry like I was there like why was I there 
And so I was panicking and I was like, I'm definitely seeing something. So I tried to go back to sleep and I was like, I feel like somebody's still watching me. And I turned around and he was still there. And I woke her up. And the second we went upstairs, I started bawling my eyes out. I was so freaked out. Like I couldn't sleep even at my own house for the next three weeks um, because it just spooked me that much. But yeah, 